This conference will now be recorded. Hello, good morning, friends. This is Mahesh Kamoto again. And uh, yesterday we have discussed about some storage kind of stuffs. So today we are going to start some of the uh, some advanced features of the uh, storage kind of stuffs. So this is the ABS uh, things we will have to cover today. So ABS is basically you have to just map this ABS uh, drives to the uh, partic particularly uh, to the AC2 machines and then it is used for the screenshots or sort of things. So we will just take a look. So ABS overview is basically the Amazon EBS provides highly available, reliable and durable block level storage volumes that can be attached to a running instances. So that is the important case is basically you have EBS volumes and it, is, it can be attached to your EC2 instances for a reliable and durable and block level storage. The EBS as a primary storage device is recommended for data that requires frequent and granular updates for example running a database of your file system. So it is also the important thing is, is it's a primary storage and device and recommended for data, data that requires frequent granular updates, right? and running a database in file systems. It is also important um, thing is of ABS. And ABS volumes behaves like a row and formatted external block device that can be attached to a single EC2 instance at a time. So it it's behaves like a secondary uh, hard disk and it sorts of ABS volumes and it's an unformatted and external block. You can use it So for the EC2 instances. So ABS volumes persist in the independently from the running life of an instance is right so you it is an independent volume so you can map to the uh, ec2 instance at the same time right and ebs volumes can be attached to any instance with within the same availability zone and, and can be uh, used like any other physical hard drive so you can use as a physical hard disk as well same times so ebs volumes can allow encryption same time right so ABS volumes allows encryptions using the same ABS encryption failure, old data stored at best disk input output and snapshots created from the volume are encrypted. The second thing is ABS volumes can be backed up by creating a snapshot of the volume, which is stored in Amazon S3. ABS volumes can be created from the snapshot can be attached to another instance within the same region. So it, it can it can be backed up all sort of things and we can take a snapshot of the volume same time and it can be uh, ABS volumes can be created on a snapshot uh, sort of things and attached to an another instance within the same region. So you can map it with the different, uh, different instances and with the, the different uh, same region, right? So ABS volumes are created in a specific availability zone, right? And can and can then be attached to any instances that that the same availability zone, and you can just uh, create ABS volumes, and that you can just add them volume to the particularly uh, same region availability zone of these two instances to make a volume available outside of the availability zones. Create a snapshot and restore the snapshot to a new volume anywhere in that region. So you go. What you need to do it. Uh, you have to just uh, take a snapshot of the particular um, ec2 instances when it is mapped to the volume uh, to the ec2 instance and then you just you can use this snapshot to a different uh, volume in the same region anywhere in the, in that region snapshots can also be copied to other uh, other regions and then stored to new volumes making it easier to leverage multiple aws regions for geographical expansions data centers migrations and disaster recovery. say so why why you require the uh, snapshot it is required is because of the data center migration sort of things and disaster recovery sort of things okay and is and making it easier to leverage multiple aws regions for geographical expansions so you have to just uh, um, suppose you required a same kind of uh, uh, eb uh, snapshot to the different different locations so you can use this this, this particular abs snapshot for different different regions to uh, provide the same same sort of you know what uh, a machine in the different different regions so that is the requirement of the particular region uh, snapshot in into the aws environment 
so uh, what we can say that elastic block storage it is a a plus abs volumes type so we have uh, we have got some different different kind of uh, abs uh, volumes once we going over the practical sort of things we will just take a look that what kind of volumes are available but here it is the, some theoretical part we have to cover it so aws provides uh, the following abs volumes types which differ in performance characteristics and price uh, which can be tall, uh, tailored for a storage performance and cost of the needs of the applications right so that the first uh, types of the abs volumes will be the general purpose ssd volumes it is called gp2 and provision iops ssd volumes io one and magnetic volumes the standard volumes we ha we have the three type of abs volumes so we can use it as per uh, as per our requirement so uh, what is the pricing part what is a uh, performance part what is how can we use it onto the SSD, uh, in the ac2 environment what is the requirement and the size of the volumes and this sort of things we are just talking about in this slide so the, in the use cases basically system boot volumes in the if you're attaching the abs volumes of ssd general purpose ssd gp2 sort of things and this this these are the volumes of system boot volumes first of all Second thing is virtual desktops and small to medium databases and dev and test environment. So you you have some use cases. You can just use uh, GP2 sort of things as a solid state drive sort of things to in a, in a different different use cases. And if you have some advanced sort of things, then provision IOPS require some read write um, very high frequent access of the database of your of your EC2 instances that you can use use the provision IOPS SSD. So input output instances, the lessness databases, and no SQL databases. So it is it's, it's very important here to uh, read and write of your databases is, is, is uh, very frequently. Then you can use it provision IOP at the same time, right? And the second thing is the, the volume size. And the volume size would be one GB to a sixteen terabyte. This you can just map it out and into into the but four GB to sixteen terabyte. You can you can map it. So maximum throughput, what you get 160, uh, 160 Mbps is the speed, the rate of speed you can find out, and here it is the, the double the speed, 20 Mbps speed you will find out here. The IOPS is 10,000 and 20,000, and IOPS instances 65,000, 60,000 same, and the throughput, the instances throughput is 1250 Mbps and 1250 Mbps, and API name is called GP2 and IO1. So that that is the difference between the two different different kind of SSDs. We can map it to the EC2 instances as the ABS volumes, and then you can use a different different use cases for the, for sort of things. So it is depend on the organization that what kind of uh, things they require at the same time. Okay, and we have some more uh, different uh, um, EBS volumes, right? So through throughput optimized hard disk. So this is the use cases again, and the infrequent data accesses, streaming of your data, big data and logs, uh, cannot be a uh, boot volumes, right? And the second is the previous we have talked talking about about the SSD solid state drives, and here it is if you're going to map that particular hard hard disk, right? This is a cold hard disk. It is a magnetic hard disk. So this is a hard disk type. And previous we have discussed some. Uh, talking about some SSD hard disk sort of things, right? So this is the first type. This, this throughput optimized hard disk. So these are the use cases. You can just uh, go for this sort of, sort of use cases, and you can map this particular drive. And if you have a cold hard cold hard disk, throughput oriented or large volumes of data, lowest storage cost is important. Cannot be a boot volume. So the, that is the use cases you can use this cold hard disk when the, there is no use of your uh, your data and it is. And it is not for the boot volumes, right? And its lowest storage cost is important as expected in our company. And once when we are going for the infrequent data access, we go for the magnetic sort of things. So it, is a, uh, the difference between the two things as SSD and hard is basically the performance, the input output performance, the read write, uh, the, the read write. We can say that uh, performance of the particularly hard disk. So the volume size we can uh, find it 500 GB to 16 terabytes, 500 to 16 GB terabytes, and 1 GB to 1 terabytes sort of um, size of the volumes we can map it into our EC2 instances as per our requirement. And the report is 500 MB, MBS megabytes, and the 250 megabytes, and the 40 to 90 megabytes volumes we can have 500 sort of things, 
and expenses are 65,000 at 1 to 5 euro MPS throughput, you will get it out. So the name of this particular EBS volumes is ST1. So you can just memorize it. What kind of uh, name of the particular different different um, uh, name of the hard disk ST1. This is SC1 and this is a standard hard disk. Okay. So once, once you're going for the uh, practical sort of things of AWS uh, EBS volumes need, you need to map to the ECC instances. So you will find out the particular name, the ST1, SC1, standard IO1, IO2, or this, this sort of thing. So you can just easily understand that which we are talking about and why we are going to use this particular uh, sort of um, EBS volumes, right? The, uh, the third thing is basically uh, we are talking about elastic block storage, general purpose SSD. We are just talking about this is the SSD, the SSD and the SDD. The other two types of the hard disk we are just talking about. So SSD basically used use where we are using it, SSD. Uh, general purpose SSD volumes offer cost effective storage that is ideal for a grand range of workloads. So if, if there is a very, um, very high workload is over there, so you can you can use this particular SSD volumes and the general purpose SSD volumes deliver single digit milliseconds latencies. So if you don't require the uh, there is a very you know what high frequent of uh, accessible of your data that you can use the general purpose SSD same time volumes. Right. And the third thing is that the general purpose SSD volumes can range uh, in size of, um, from one gig to 16 terabytes, so you can just uh, map the as per your requirement things, right? And GP2 provides the baseline performance of three IOPS uh, and gigabytes per second. So th this is the SSD uh, volumes and the GP2 volume, and then you can use it as per your requirement. If you uh, have highly frequent of data and data requirement, and you require some, you know what, uh, no latencies, you don't you don't require for your data accessible same time so then you can map the ssd volumes to gp2 volumes same time so it is uh, very frequently accessible of your data same time and uh, provisioned iops uh, ssd volumes this is another uh, types we have just talking about earlier as well so uh, what is uh, the differentiator here it is provisioned iops ssd volumes are designed to meet the needs of uh, input output intensive work workloads particularly uh, database workloads that are sen sensitive to storage performance and cons consistency in random access input output throughput. Provision IOP SSD volumes can range in size uh, from one gig to 16 terabytes, right? And provision IOP SSD volumes can be provisioned up to 20,000 IOPS per volume, right? This is the important thing is you have to notice that 20,000 IOPS volume per second. So that is the only one difference that we can go for it. The size is we can go for it any any sort of sizes, but the IOPS, the read write, uh, uh, read write, you know what, uh, <coughs> IOPS. It's a very very important prospects. The ratio of, of IOPS provision the, to the volume size request can be maximum of 30. And for example, volume with 3,000 IOPS must add the at least 100 gig gigabyte. Site so that this is very important because what what kind of IOPS you required on the corporate environment, right? So GP2 or the, if you require GP2, if you require some uh, SSD volumes of provision IOPS required, and what kind of IOPS you required, how much size of the hard disk you required, uh, and what type of uh, your data accessible read and write permissions, read read and write sort of performance you required. So that that's the important piece you need to. Be well aware about it. That what what needs to be mapped and where it need to be mapped and how effectively it is working and what is the cost effective solutions at the same time. Provision IOPS SSD volumes can be striped together in great configurations in the larger size and greater performance over 20,000 IOPS. That is important prospect here. If you're going for the IOPS SSD volumes, then it, the the IOPS uh, input output processing is the speed is 20,000. So this is another. Uh, in very important prospects for your uh, storage sort of things and that is uh, the magnetic volumes we are talking about it's a it's a sdd sort of things hard disk sort of things right so um, the the speed uh, the performance is little slower than uh, the than ssd right and um, 
so we are just talking about uh, about uh, magnet magnetic volumes is basically so magnetic volumes provide the lowest cost of per gigabyte of the all ebs volumes magnetic volumes are backed magnetic drives are ideal for the workloads performing sequential reads workloads where data is accessed infrequent, infrequently and scenarios where the lowest uh, storage cost is important magnetic volumes can range in size of 1 1 gig, one gig to 1 terabytes these volumes deliver approximately 100 iops so that is the important prospect prospects that if you're going for the magnetic volume sort of things hardest sort of things and there is a 100 iops on average right with burst capacity up up to the hundreds of io iops the magnetic volumes can be stepped together in the rate configurations and for larger size and greater performance so it is like your magnetic hard disk you have to map in your uh, local uh, drives your laptop or your your desktop environment you just going for the magnetic sort of things and there's a input output speed is slower than um, uh, so the, the the performance of your database if you map this particular magnetic volumes to your database so the the, the iop is that the right permissions they write um, performance of your hard disk is very slower than we expect so uh, i i always recommended that you, if you're going for the database sort of um, volumes you need to map your ec2 instances go for the s3 sort of thing so the output output uh, uh, very high and you can just uh, the performance will be very good okay then we go going for the abs volumes creation and delegation detachment so abs volumes can be created either creating a new volume so restore volumes from the snapshot so they are, these are the two important prospects uh, of the vol volumes we can create a new volumes and then we can map to the particular ec2 instances okay the, the drives and uh, the second option so you can just restore your volume from the snapshots suppose you are just going for create a new ec2 instance and then you when it is going for the hardest sort sort of things, then you can just map this map this particular snapshot at the same time, so that the same uh, sort of um, uh, hard disk space it will take same time, right? Mm -hmm. The uh, ABS volumes mm -hmm. deletion would uh, wipe out uh, its data, and the volumes can't be attached to any instance. However, it can be uh, backed up before del deletion using ABS snapshots. ABS volumes can be and detest from an instance uh, explicitly try the uh, terminating the instances right ebs root volumes can be uh, detest by stop stopping the instance right so ebs volumes can be detest from an instance explicitly by the uh, by terminating the instances and the ebs uh, root volumes can be detest by stopping the instances this is also the important things so you can delete, modify, changes, sort of things. You can do it in the ABS volumes. And the ABS snapshots creation and del uh, deletion. ABS provides the ability to create a snapshots backups, right? So why are we going to create a snapshot? Snapshots are basically used as a backup sort of things. Suppose your EC2 instance has some, got, so has got some issues, right? So you can, if you have uh, if you have a snapshot in your, the ABS volumes, right? You can just create a new EC2 instance and that map the, the same snapshot into your EC2 instances. So that your, your EC2 instance is working absolutely fine that time. So of any EBS volumes and write copy of the data in and data in the volumes in, to the Amazon S3 where it is stored dynamically in uh, multiple availability zones. So you can just store your EBS volumes to the S3 and then it is uh, you provided the dynamicity in the multiple availability zones you can use it snapshots can be used to create a new volumes increase the size of volumes or the or the applicate data across our availability zones right snapshots can be created from the abs volumes periodically and are a point in time snapshots snapshots are incremental and the um, and only store the block on, on the on the device that changed since the last snap, snapshot was taken when a snapshot is uh, deleted only the data exclusive to that snapshot is removed deleting previous snapshots of a volumes do not affect your ability to uh, restore volumes from the latter snapshots and of the volumes so that that is the you know what uh, important uh, use cases of the snapshots you can use snapshots so you know what taking the 
uh, a backup of your uh, drive and then you can use it on different different uh, ec2 instances and different different availability zones as well same times right. so the what is the benefit of the particular ec2 instance uh, so abs volumes the data availability you uh, and the data persistence and the data encryption same times the abs volumes is automatically replicated in the availability zone to prevent data loss due to failure of a single hardware component right so if you have the taking the snapshot of the particular uh, ebs volumes then it automatically replicated to different different availability zones and prevent data loss failure same time right data persistence ebs volumes persist independent um, independently of the running life of an ec2 instances abs volume persist when an instance is stopped and started or reported boot abs volumes is deleted by default and instance uh, terminations uh, but can be modified by cha by changing the uh, delete on termination flags right so that is the persistence available and, and abs volumes can be encrypted by abs encryption features so these are the three main benefits of the abs volumes we are just talking about and that is only uh, that is the end of this particular things so uh, we have just uh, we have covered S3 uh, bucket yesterday. So we are just going for the some sort of uh, you know what basic fundamentals of S3. So this is object based storage and this is high available and uh, we can create up to five terabytes of the S3 right. And uh, it can be uh, you know what each bucket have a unique name. You have to provide some different different names of the bucket rights. And uh, S3 objects is basically is a key uh, value and different different versions and we can provide some accessless sort of things into the S3 bucket site. Right? And um, it is uh, the AWS region and sync across all availability zones, right? After read, write constancy of ports, and uh, we can port and delete, and we can use this particular AWS CLI. And uh, we can just uh, map some particular data is uploading or downloading sort of things. We can do it. And objects are same as zero bytes uh, up to five terabytes of size. We have multiple uh, versions if enabled we can use it and uh, us3 bucket should be always be you, you can have options available so encrypted so you can uh, encrypt your uh, s3 bucket is 256 aes aws kms right so uh, we have the uh, specific object keys also available so you can just map it as per your diff different different department wise sort of things and uh, this is for different department different 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 departments so you can just upload your data as per your requirement right so you can use this particular SDK as, as well as AWS SDK as software development kit. You can just install into your systems and then you can upload all sort of things. You can do it. And the permissions, you can also provide some uh, permissions, right? So both buckets and objects uh, has access, con access control list. We can use it. Public content, we have options available in, into the um, S3 bucket that sh should we go for the public, public access or uh, and the private access, uh, private access of the particular S3 bucket. So by default, all objects and buckets are privately by default, right? And uh, storage classes, object availability, object durability, and frequently access. We have just talking about yesterday that uh, standard sort of things and redundancy, the network storage, and frequent accesses and glacier. We can use to for archiving of your data, so it is accessible in three to five hours, right? Right, and uh, store uh, all versions of an object including deleted once a version so versioning is, is also the important cases here once a uh, versioning is enabled it cannot be disabled only uh, suspended integrated with the life cycle rules and we can also use the mfa delete, uh, delete capability which multi-factor authentications can be you can use it and close to an application so it's all it's, it's it is also an important uh, prospect because we have just uh, uh, provide uh, we have created the s3 bucket in one of the region and it, it will be uh, we have enabled the you know what cross region the application same time so that it will be the play to the different different regions so if you know, the one region goes goes down then you can just uh, restore your data from the different availability zones and you can also map the life cycle policies as per your uh, of, um, used to be conjunction of the versioning applied to current version of the this sort of things and permanently delete so you have um, options available how you effectively manage your policies and uh, uh, if your data is not uses right it is uh, taking it is cost the money so you can just uh, cover your data so it was less uh, less uh, money you have to encrypt uh, paid 
and they, your your S3 bucket is, is you can just go for the encryption sort of things. So this is in transit, and the rest, if your data is rest position, then you can just go for the SSC server side, server side encryption same time. And if your data is transit is is uh, in an output accessing the same time, so then you can go for the SSL TLS sort of uh, encryptions. You can do it. This is accelerations. We can simply click on the and the cross region applications. We have to enable it. That that that's the thing. So in my teapot, if you have a if you have a uh, one terabyte or what two terabytes uh, or uh, one gigabyte one GB file, then you can it is break down into the particular uh, file and then it is will be uh, provide the confirmations. Everything is uploaded uh, uploaded on, on your S3 bucket without any other so without any issues, right? So we have the study of all sort of things, right? So this is S3 is the same, same, same things is available. So different, different kind of EBS uh, uh, storage part we have available. So the file level uh, Amazon EFS, file level storage, this is object level storage, the S3 bucket in Amazon Glacier. And if you're talking about, um, we have available Amazon EBS and Amazon EC2, uh, EC2 sort of things. And this is a stream sort of things, right? So this is all things we have studied. Um, web-based sort of things and this is the durability availability scalability is it to use same time that it's a very secure sort of things and simple data transfer integrated sort of things uh, and these are the some by types of the standard uh, sort of things general purpose s3 amazon s3 standard in frequent access so standard ie you can use it uh, if your data is is, a, is low cost and archival sort of things then you can use go for the glitch glitch sort of things right so these are the main differences between things big data analysis content distribution and static website hosting so you can use this standard s3 bucket you can go go for it and if you have backup archiving sort of things and digital recovery files sync and share long retained data so you can go for standard ie in frequent access of your data right and if your data is going for the long term as uh, uh, saving right so you can go for the glacier sort of things so long term arch archives you can you go for uh, glacier digital pres preservation and magnetic tip the, the placement you can go for it so this is like globally unique you have to provide some different name globally unique right and then you provide a different different bucket name and also folders of the bucket and then you can upload your documents as per your requirement this is a bucket okay bucket containers amazon s3 Every, every object is contained in the bucket, organizes the S3 bucket. So this is the, the sort of things. And the objects can be one byte to zero byte uh, terabytes. So we have study yesterday as well, same time sort of differences as well. So these are the key, we can use it. Advanced in the storage bucket policies, we can provide some different different pocket bucket policies. After 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days, data should be go to the archiving and after uh, in, in the uh, in archiving glacier after the one year the data should be deleted so that's a cost effective solution we can provide same time and we can provide some bucket policies get object get delete the object sort of things bucket versioning we can do do it so there is no um duplicacy into this particular uh, bucket right so life cycle management we this that's we are talking about 30 days archiving and seven days after it is it will be deleted so there's that sort of things we can uh, also doing into this um, S3 and this cross region application we can also going to do it, right? And these are the some uh, pricing up to, uh, first 50 terabytes of uh, a month, and then this is the this is the price 0.3 to 0.25 and uh, dollars per GB. So this is standard storage, and this is standard in frequent access storage 0.19 and the glacier if you 0.0.5 per GB. Right, so this is the difference of the cost. If you have, uh, if you are storing your data for the long time, you can go for the glacier, right? It is a very low cost and cost effective solutions. But the matter of fact that if you're going to restore your data, it will take three to five hours, right? Same time. So uh, if you're going for the disaster recovery or uh, business continuity sort of things, uh, the recovery time objective or sort of things, then uh, you don't have to go for it. Then you go for this, this one, right? Uh, and next 4 to 4 52 terabytes per month then this is 24 uh, per gb and you can just go for the 3.5 so this is the uh, glacier is, is very cheaper if you just take a look okay 
for the long-term archiving and this infrequent uh, your access of data this is the same sort of things and this is the standard storage of the s3 bucket once we're creating any uh, s3 bucket in the free tree environment then you can uh, just go for the standard storage and then the pricing will be this is the available this is one free tier one year this is free and then you can just uh, uh, up, up, you know what providing the providing a request to the aws and they will they, they will provide you you know, some increase of things like that so we will just uh, uh, talking later on this particular uh, um, you know what practical sort of things later on all all, all of the storage and then we have some you know what some different uh, snowballs available so AWS Snowball is a service that accelerates transferring large amounts of data into out of the AWS using physical storage devices by passing the internet. Suppose you are working in a, a corporate environment and the, the data is more than 10 uh, terabytes of data, right? So uh, you have to uh, upload your all the data to the uh, AWS environment, right? So the AWS environment, what uh, if you using the if you are uploading your data to the AWS environment, it is definitely using the internet access same time. But uh, yeah, if you are using the AWS Snowball, then there is no requirement of internet. If the, if the AWS team is sending you the AWS Snowball hardware device to your company, and then you can just uh, uh, upload your data into the AWS hardware same time. So there is no usage of your internet same time. And the AWS team is, uh, you know what, uh, download, up, upload your data to the AWS environment same time. So the each AWS Snowball device type can uh, transport data at faster than internet speeds, and that the transport is done by the shipping the data in the devices through the original carrier. The devices are that shipping containers exam complete with e-link shipping labels. So the, the this is the hardware device which is providing by the AWS team, and then you can just upload your data into the uh, download your data into the AWS uh, Snowball, and then. Uh, mm, the AWS team is, you know, what um, um, provide you data into the AWS environment same for you, and then you can just use it for your company same times. With Snowball, you can transfer hundreds of terabytes of uh, petabytes of data between your on-premises data centers and Amazon simple storage devices, right? And the AWS Snowball uses Snowball app appliances that provides a powerful interfaces that you can use to create jobs, transfer data, and create and track the status of your jobs through the competition. Completion by shipping your data data in snowballs, you can transfer large amounts of uh, data at a significant faster rate than if you were transferring data uh, over the internet, saving you time and money. So the what the AWS recommended is is important. If you have data is more than 10 terabytes of data, you can go for the AWS Snowball. If your data is mo not more than uh, 10 terabytes of data, then you can use different different kind of services like a uh, storage gateway sort of things and then uh, and a a AWS, uh, you know what, S3 sort of things. So you can uh, very cost effective solutions, you can get it. And then another aspect of the particular, so let's say the same things which I'm talking about, if you, if you want to transfer less than terabytes of data between your own privacy data, centers and Amazon S3 Snowball might not be your most economical choice for you, right? So if you have data is more than 10 terabytes or 20 terabytes, 50 terabytes or 80 terabytes, you can just um, go for the AWS Snowball same time. And another aspect of the AWS Snowball is and Snowball uses Snowball appliances shipped through your regions carrier. Each Snowball is protected by the AWS Key Management Service. AWS Key Management Service, right? It's an encrypted sort of things and made physically react to secure the protect your data while the Snowball is transist. In the US region, Snowballs comes into two flavors, right? Two sizes, 50 terabytes and the 80 terabytes. All of the regions, you have 80 terabytes Snowball available. So if you are in the US locations, US location regions, you will find up the two sizes of the Snowballs, 50 terabytes and 80 terabytes. And if you are different regions, then you will get the 80 terabytes and they have a different pricing of the Snowball. All right. So uh, we have some different, different, uh, you know, what uh, uh, features available for the uh, AWS Snow, uh, Snowball. You can import and export data between uh, your on-premises data st uh, storage locations and Amazon, Amazon S3. Right? Snowball has 80 
terabyte model available in all the regions and 50 terabytes model in the US regions, right? In the, the, all the data will be encrypt, forced to encrypt it, protecting your data. You don't have to buy or maintain your own hardware devices. So you don't have to require the, your own hardware devices to uh, provide a backup of providing a, you know what, a, a backup for the 50, 10 to 20 terabytes of data to upload to your AWS environments. You can manage your jobs through the AWS Snowball Management Console uh, or programmably with programmatically with the job management API. So you have what you need to do is you have to just go for the AWS Snowball console and just run the job. And once the job is running, then the AWS team will sending you the AWS Snowball device, hardware device to your premises. And then you can just plug uh, the AWS Snowball device into your environment. Then you can just transfer your data at the same time. So if you just okay, take a look at what kind of device looks looks like, so so you uh, I will show you how it is looks like. So the other two types of things available: Snowball and Snowball Edge. So we are just talking about Snowball. If you're going for the Snowball Edge, this is the different sort of things. But import data into the S3. This is yes. Uh, import export export from the Amazon uh, Amazon S3. Yes, yeah, it is. Uh, features are available same times. And these these are the two types of. Uh, Amazon Snowball. So these are this is the Snowball uh, we are just talking about. This is a 50 terabytes or 80 terabytes. This is the uh, hardware appliance which which will be sent by the AWS team to your premises, and then you can just plug it uh, to your environment uh, from the RG45 connector or SFP connector, and then you you can just uh, transfer your data at the same time, right? And this is the uh, Snowball Edge. This is some advanced features, um, right? So this is the 50 terabytes of data for terabytes US regions only, yes. And 80 terabytes, that's yes. And the 100 terabytes, if you have more than 100 terabytes of data, then you can go for the Snowball Edge sort of hardware devices, same time, right? So this is all, this is the matters and how it is effectively you can use it. I will show you some, yeah, this is, this is, this is the, how to use the Snowball. The snowball, you can use it simply you can just create, a, create an import job right from your AWS console. Same time, go for the AWS console, and then you can just uh, AWS Snowball, and then you can just create an import job, or you can also create the export job. Same times, whatever the requirement of your company on you, and then connect your your Snowball device. When sometimes later, two or three days or one week later, the AWS team will sending you the Snowball device at your premises. Then you just connect your it Snowball to your premises and they copy your, your data same times and then uh, send back to this particular the uh, snowball to the AWS and they will you know what uh, upload your data into their environment AWS environment so that's the, that sort of things you can go for it so import and export these these are the two things you can go for if you are importing your data and you're going to exporting your data is depend on the case to case so this is the AWS snowball we are just talking about so uh, another aspect of the particular uh, AWS environment is the AWS uh, Gateway. So AWS Storage Gateway connects an on-premises software appliance with the uh, appliance with the cloud-based storage to provide seamlessly integrations with data security features between your on-premises IT environment and the AWS storage infrastructure. So you can use the service to store data in the AWS cloud for scalable and cost effective storage that helps you maintain the data uh, security right so uh, we have uh, suppose you are working in a corporate environment and you have to just uh, provide uh, uh, your files to the aws environment right and this, this file size is not 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 more than if you have using the some application sort of things and you can go for it right so we have some uh, file level uh, file gateway we have storage gateway available so you can if you have to move your files to the um, your on-premises environment to the s3 bucket you can go for the file uh, gateway right a file gateway supports in file inter interface into amazon sim simple storage and uh, storage service amazon s3 and combines a service and virtual software appliance by using this com uh, combination so you can store and retrieve objects in uh, amazon s3 using industry standard file protocol such as network file systems right it is it's based on the nfs and also the server message block and the software appliances now gateways deployed on your on premises environment is a virtual machines right then you go on vms vmware exercise so this is the particular vmware exercise this is a sort of 
software the 780 753 mb you have to install into, into your premises and then 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 the gateway ip address you have to provide uh, right and then you have just mapped your aws environment with your corporate environment and then you can move the file same time no problem so it is supported the nfs uh, 3 and 4.1 sort of things and you can retrieve uh, the uh, protocol and which is also the s3 s3 environment directly s3 environment and a cloud application of the service you can just map it and the file gateway simplifies storage in amazon s3 so you can just uh, share your files to the amazon s3 same time so this is uh, the volume the second thing is uh, volume gateway the file gateway and the second is volume gateway if you are uh, uh, a volume gateway provides a cloud uh, back backend storage volumes that you can mount as in internet small computer system interface iSCSI devices from your on premises application servers that gateway supports the following volumes configurations suppose uh, you are working in a corporate environment where the iSCSI sort of uh, 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 you know what uh, the storage sort of things are, are available so you what you need to do is if you need to uh, map your volume gateway uh, to your AWS environment, so you have to go for the volume uh, gateway. Provide the volume gateway IP addresses. Mm -hmm. Once we're going for the practical sort of things, you just take a look. So, uh, so your all the volumes will be uh, you know what uh, backed up into your S3 environment same times. So, cached volumes we have those two options available: cached volumes and the stored volumes. The cached volumes will be you store your data in uh, Amazon Simple Storage S3 and retain a copy of it in frequent like data access. Uh, subnets locally cached volumes of uh, sub substantial cost savings on primary storage and minimize the need to scale your premises right and the stored volumes if you have need low latency access of your in entire data sheet first configure on your premises gateway to um, to all your store all your data and locally and then asynchronously back up your point to point snapshots and uh, of the data and the amazon s3 so um, if you if you would like to um, if you would like to go for the you know what uh, um, uh, snapshot sort of things and you have to move your files to um, uh, do the s3 in, um, AWS environment then you can you can simply uh, map the stored volumes to your uh, AWS environment so that that is that is really help at the same time to uh, accessible the, the, the data and the tape gateway suppose your company is uh, corporate environment is is using the tape uh, tape sort of solutions for the backup Things so you can uh, map the tap gateway same times to your AWS uh, storage um, gateway storage and then all the backup will be done from the uh, AWS environments right so that with the AW, with a tape gateway you can cost effectively and durably um, archive backup data in Amazon Glacier a tape gateway provides a virtual tape infrastructures that scale scales seamlessly with your business needs and eliminates the operational burden of the provision, provisioning, scaling, and man, maintaining a physical tape infrastructures. You can you you can run AWS uh, a storage gateway either on premises or VM appliances or in AWS as an Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud instance. You deploy your gateway on EC2 instance and provision as SCSI and storage volumes in AWS gateway hosted in EC2 instance and disaster equal data that they are moving and data storage problems can be hosted. So these are the things you can just map it. You you can map your uh, tape drives to your S3 back at same times. So it is very cost effective solutions and you, it is will be uh, a, uh, it, it can be used as a, a disaster recovery at the same terms. So these are the some uh, first use cases of this particular creating volumes. How can we create a volume? So once we're going for the you know what uh, uh, in the practical sort of things, we will just take a look at how it is. Uh, working effectively but the the, the, the pictures this is show, uh, showing is their the application servers this is your current uh, you know environment right this is applications uh, this is application server which we which we uh, talking about right now this is your application servers in your current environment and then you have mapped the storage gateway so it's, it is depend the file gateway or storage gateway or tape gateway what kind of things you're just going to provide it okay and this is the nfs sort of Things and it is directly communicated with your application server, right? And then you can just uh, storage gateway. You can just map with the direct connect, the high fast connectivity, um, the ISP sort of connectivity with your and uh, AWS environment and your your current environment same time, right? 
so it is your op it is your um, a choice that you have to use the AWS backend or not because it say you know what uh, uh, you know what the price is very uh, we can say very, you have to pay for the price of a direct connect same times and you can also Amazon VPC you have to map with the Amazon VPC to with the AWS gateway and then you can uh, at the back end of this particular you can map with the Amazon S3 Amazon S3 IA and frequent access right and Amazon glaciers so this is your AWS environment. In the AWS environment, so you have different different storage types, right? S3 and uh, S3 IE and Amazon Glacier, and then you could, you can just map it high uh, fast connectivity, right? Uh, of your Amazon Direct Connect, you can use it, or the internet connectivity you can use it, or if you if you have a choice, you don't connect to the, the Direct Connect, you can not you can use or not use same time, but then um, the storage gateway you can map it, and then you can map your storage gateway and connectivity with your application server or your, your tape drive or gateway drive whatever you can use it so it is whatever the things will be coming here they're taking snapshot files transfer sort of things then it will go into the gateway and then gateway is, is transferring the files to the s3 or s3 ia or glacier it depends on what what sort of things you have mapped it to the particular things right so this is the this this is a use case we can use we can use it for the storage gateway sort of things right and another aspect of the amazon glaciers so we are already talking about the glacier is basically used for you know what uh, archiving sort of things and it is you know what very cheaper 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.005 uh, dollars uh, we uh, we have to spend for the same times right and uh, if your data is not accessible uh, more frequently then you can use the glacier same time right so that that is it's a low cost sort of things and amazon customers can store your data cost effectively for months years and even decades amazon glacier enables customers for uh, offload administrative burdens of creating operating scaling sort of things aws and they don't have worry about the capacity planning hardware provisioning data applications hardware failure detection or recovery or time consuming hardware migrations for service so this is the uh, the, the amazon glacier the, uh, the organizations are using uh, long term uh, storage of your data and it's infrequent of data and very cheaper of the data there is no disaster recovery sort of disaster recovery sort of things happen business contrary sort of things we can use it right so that that's the beauty about this particular amazon glacier so amazon glacier we can access from the particular uh, aws console and it's also accessible from the aws sdk software development and you can install it to your systems and you can use it and this that 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 is a use case of the particular aws glacier so you can use use it for the you know what so in this aws basically that the vaults vaults are created vaults are the you know what the, the big the big containers we can say that the big containers have multiple data you can use it right so that that that's the thing things so you can just go for the sort of things and the another thing is we are just talking about here <clears throat> this our uh, amazon uh, elastic file system is, is it is one of the you know what uh, it is also uh, one of the storage sort, sort of things which is talking about so amazon elastic file uh, systems it provides a simple scalable file storage for the use with Amazon EC2, the Amazon EFS elastic file system storage capacity is elastic, growing and shrinking automatically as you can add or remove files. So your applications have the storage they need. When they need it, Amazon EFS has a simple web service interface that allows you to create and configure file, uh, file systems uh, quickly and easily. The service man manages all the file storage infrastructure for you, man meaning that you can avoid the complexity of the deploying patches and maintaining complex file systems configurations right so efs basically uh, what you can do it is elastic file systems and you can just map with your ec2 instances and it is you know what shrinking and it is you know what uh, uh, is growing as per the requirement of your data working same times that so efs supports the network file system same times right it's a part it's, it's kind of protocols uh, is using it right and <coughs> so the applications and tools that you can use today seamlessly with amazon efs multi well, amazon ec2 instances can access the amazon efs file system at the same time providing a common data source of 
workloads and applications running on the more more than one instance on the servers uh, server so the important case uh, important thing is here suppose you are working in a corporate environment you have uh, hosting a web applications right and um, uh, uh, you require a common uh, um, um, repository for the data accessible and data in and data out out same time so you can um, you have running uh, more than 10 uh, each two instances or 20 instances or what or number of instances same times so you can do one thing that you will just uh, create instance and then you can map your ec2 instances with the efs volumes elastic file system volumes so as as per the requirement as uh, the the volumes are shrinking and uh, as, as the requirement the the if the throughput is very high then the the volumes will be inwards uh, growing as the as the requirement so that that is that is the important case because uh, uh, as per as per the demand as per the load on the particular ec2 instances the volumes will be growing and the volumes will be uh, decreasing the size right so it is also used um, it's cost effective solutions and uh, you can uh, saving lots of money because you don't have to provide a specific uh, uh, size of the volumes same times if you are providing the one terabytes of or two terabytes of um, or you can say uh, 50 or 100 GB of your speech to your is two instances that then uh, there's just then the situations comes in in front of you that you have to increase the size of the volumes and you know you, you do have some different sort of things you have to map the uh, EBS volumes or different sort of things you need to do it but if you map with the elastic uh, file system right so it there is no uh, there is there is no worry about it because the EFS volumes will be in these same times if it if it is load is very high and it is shrinking if it if there is no load on the particular server so the common repository we the, the servers can be used same times with the amazon efs you can pay only for storage used for your file systems and there is no minimum fees the setup or cost cost is related to the provision and throughput and determined by the support what value specific more information the service is designed for be highly scalable highly available and highly durable the amazon efs file systems store data and my data across multiple availability zones in the AWS regions if file systems can grow and uh, pentabyte scale and drive high throughput allow mass allow massively parallel from the ec2 instances of your data right so that that is all about this particular efs and the other multiple things you will just find out into this particular um pdf so where you uh, this this is this is the use case we so suppose uh, this is the vulnerability zone <coughs> us waste 2a the secondary uh, availability zone availability zones us waste 2b and availability zone uh, us waste 2c so we have three different different availability zones in us location with one region and three diff different availability zones available and then you, what you need to do it the subnet is basically one there's another subnet is we are using it and we have different different instances this is the one um, one different uh, EC2 instances, EC2 instances available. Two different EC2 instances available. Then uh, you, what you need to do is go for the EFS volumes, and then you can just go mount target. You just uh, it is asking for you know what uh, the map with the EC2 instances default or whatever you providing uh, providing security group same times, and then your file system. This is one file system same times, and then you can. Uh, you know what accessible or the right and syncing or what what need, different different things is happening over there and you can just map this particular efs volumes to the efs with the different different um, availability zones so this is these two instances this is separate and this is you can just mount at the same times so this is <clears throat> one availability zone is using the efs volume same times and another uh, um, availability is also using the same time suppose this this is goes down so though everything you will find out in this efs volumes here same time so this this is basically uh, you know what the um, uh, high durable high flexible and uh, uh, it is required in the um, you know what disaster recovery uh, and business continuity sort of things it is will be covered so that 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 is all about uh, we're just talking about the uh, um, uh, that's all that's all about we are just talking about the particular ec is ec2 uh, uh, sorry storage sort of things right and you will i will just provide the particular link over the years and then you can just go the guidelines and app and this the storage sort of things and we have different different kind of storage available so we have just covered s3 bucket s3 sort of things 
why we are going to use it when we are going to use it how effectively we are using using it and the, the does it cost effective solutions we are just talking about the abs volumes the different different use cases we are using ssd sdd sort of things we are just talking about the efs elastic file systems where we using it how it effectively you can use it amazon glacier it's their carving solutions what we need to do it as per requirements snowball this is a hardware sort of the, uh, appliance providing by the aws team and it is if your data is more than terab 10 terabytes of data you can use the snowball device from the aws and uh, the 80 terabytes is appliances available in all of the regions and us locations with 50 terabytes and the 80 terabytes uh, hardware appliances available right and the storage gateway we are already talking about that the file level file and tape uh, file gateway and storage gateway and different different kind of gateway available so you can just map with your application server and then you can just transfer your files to the on premises to your and aws cloud environment s3 bucket same times so this is the uh, s um, storage part we have done it today and uh, tomorrow we will just go for some practical sort of things all sort of things and we can then be wrap up the things thank you for your all for your kind attentions and uh, thank you for your time bye